The far right are on the march across much of Europe. In the UK, we like to think we're a bit more moderate. If I said the British far right, you might think Oswald Mosley in his black shirts, or the National Front, or even the BNP. But what if I told you that UKIP have become Britain's first mainstream far-right party since the war? You know, UKIP. Anti-EU, Nigel Farage, tweed jackets, a nostalgia for 1950s Britain. Yes, they had some off-piece moments, but their actual policies were mainly about low taxes and bashing Brussels. Just what planet are you on? But after the Brexit referendum, their reason to exist more or less disappeared. When Farage stepped down, they went through four leaders in two years. But now they're launching something of a comeback with a notable shift to the right. They've called today the Brexit betrayal rally and UKIP said they hoped thousands would turn out and just look, thousands indeed have. To work out how this happened, we need to understand what we mean by far-right politics. What these parties have in common is that they're, they're all uh, nationalist, but it's a specific form of nationalism. It's, it's a xenophobic or exclusionistic form of nationalism. So that element is basically the core foundation of the populist radical right, this nativism. However, it is often combined with authoritarianism. And the final element is populism. So I think that is the, 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 the core of the populist radical right. And it's important to distinguish the populist radical right from the extreme right. The extreme right um, is anti-democratic. Uh, the extreme right wants to abolish democracy by means of violence. Um, but the parties we are talking about, they are not extremists, they are radical. UKIP has long tried to keep a lid on its far-right tendencies. The party even has a rule still in place which bans ex-members of far-right groups from joining. So what has changed? It's mainly down to one person, Gerard Batten. So Gerard Batten, I mean, the big element of his platform, you know, that he's pushed UKIP in the direction of is, is around this notion of anti-Muslim prejudice, anti-Muslim hatred. All Muslims are followers of the cult of Muhammad. That cult is an ideology of blood-soaked, regressive nonsense. He uh, openly stood on the streets of London at a demonstration and called Muhammad a paedophile. These are, these are things that uh, you would expect to find on the far right in the really kind of international anti-Muslim scene that you wouldn't have traditionally heard from Nigel Farage and, and UKIP. So I just want to, to, to make sure that you still uh, stand by your statement that Islam is a death cult. Well, study its history for the last 1400 years and if you take an impartial look at it, you might come to that view as well, Gillian. He's made a conscious decision to shift the party in, a far, in an increasingly far-right direction. So they've become a really worrying threat because you have a platform which is really far-right, but a public perception which is often much more moderate. Batten has also allied UKIP with controversial YouTube personalities, including a senior editor at the far-right conspiracy theory website Infowars, Paul Joseph Watson. I'll tell you why I joined UKIP. The only major political party in this country that supports free speech, that opposes the continued insanity of mass immigration, that opposes the brutal practice of halal slaughter. That's why I joined UKIP, and that's why you should join too. He's also recruited Carl Benjamin, known as Sargon of Akkad, and Marcus Meachin, who goes by the name of Count Dankula. I'll be able to turn a younger audience on to UKIP and gain them support among the younger people, as well as some other forms of aid. Thanks, Israel. These associations helped UKIP's membership surge by 15% in just one month. And this has now been translated into policies. At the UKIP conference in the autumn, Batten announced a series of new policies in the party's interim manifesto. These included repealing the Equalities Act, introducing special checks for immigrants from Islamic countries and the possibility of Muslim-only prisons. And most recently, he's appointed Tommy Robinson, real name Stephen Yaxley Lennon, who is the founder of the English Defence League. He's now a personal advisor to Gerard Batten. Jailed for assault in 2005, jailed in 2012 for illegally entering the US on a false passport, jailed again in 2014 for mortgage fraud, and also has convictions for drug offences and public order offences. I'm not going to go through all that. Did he break the law? Yes, I'm sure he did on occasion. So did the suffragettes. 
so did Gandhi, so did Nelson Mandela. They are all now uh, looked at as national and international heroes. This is a big deal. It's prompting a number of other senior UK people, including Nigel Farage, to quit the party in protest. Unfortunately, we've gone in this direction of turning a blind eye to extremist politics. And so with very great reluctance, I'm no longer a member of UKIP. By taking UKIP in that direction, this is a much easier party to attack. It's a much easier party to rightly paint as what it is, far right. He's brought in activists that have got such bad records, such explicit records of racism. But there is no doubt the party is in a healthier state than it was a year ago. Batten steadied that ship. And he's seen this mass of angry people on the streets and he's attempting to give them a voice to bring in those people. And he'll be relatively successful at that. The question is, can he go beyond that mass, that small angry mass of Tommy Robinson supporters and speak to her anger in, in wider society? If recent history teaches us anything, it's that UKIP's influence is often indirect. Brexit didn't happen because UKIP had enough clout in Parliament to force a referendum. They never had more than two MPs. Instead, it all happened because of conservative panic at UKIP's growing popularity. Whether to remain in a reformed European Union or to leave, the choice is in your hands. So, does this mean UKIP are about to make a breakthrough with these ideas? And if so, what does it actually mean for British politics? There are some people who would suggest that the Conservative Party has taken a more populist line on certain issues to do with immigration, which often um, overlaps with some of the views on, on, on Muslims, in part to pull the rug from under the feet of UKIP. And perhaps that might be one of the reasons why you see UKIP pushing more to the right, because they see that their natural home has kind of been taken by um, elements of the Conservative Party. We, you know, people say, oh, politicians should be careful what they say and they should watch their words and all this sort of mumbo jumbo. I don't agree. I don't agree. But I think that when you have mainstream individuals saying really hostile things to Muslims, I mean, about Muslims, and they are seen as acceptable, then it kind of gives leeway to a large number of others. There have been concerns about an increase in intolerance since the referendum. Go back your country! This is our country! In the past year, 70% of British Muslims say they've experienced some form of prejudice. And the number of people flagged to authorities because of worries about far-right activity has risen by more than a third. And more widely in society, this shift is becoming much more visible. You want a war? I'll give you a war! You want it? It's on! I'm not dead. No! You ain't even fucking British! These are ideas which used to be on the very fringes of political life. But now, the more they're repeated by mainstream politicians with access to national media, the more normalised they become. You want to repeal hate speech guidelines. You want to repeal the Equality Act of 2010. You want to shut down the Equalities and Human Rights Commission. And you want to shut down the Government Equalities Office. Yeah. That's hardly in keeping right. with uh, diversity yeah. and a multicultural society, is it? All right. Thanks for watching. Click subscribe to watch more videos in this series. If you like this video and want to support The Guardian, please click here.